When you have doubts and you're by yourself or your family's not eating the same way, you can think about your tribe at the retreat. You can think about all those other people who are in this for the same reason, you know, for better health, for better mood, you know, whatever it may be, you're not alone. Hi, everyone. I am so excited about today's guest. This is Rebecca Heishman. Did I say it right? Yes, you got it. <laughs> Goodness. Okay. I saw Rebecca's story um, early in my days on looking at into the carnivore lifestyle, and it just brought me to weeping tears, her vulnerability, everything that she's been through, and her current creativity and um, vivid, thriving vision. Um, so We've gotten to know each other in a lot of different wells, ways. We'll talk about that over throughout the interview. I'm just so happy that you're here. I love I'm so happy to be here. Thank yes. you. Yes. Yes. I love your shirt. You've got sunflowers. <laughs> we're just like, oh. I feel like Rebecca and I are like, like little kids. Like when we see each <laughs> yes. other, we just like kind of jump up and down. <laughs> yeah. like, it's my person. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. Okay. So, um, let's talk about let's, yeah, let's talk about where you've been and that early story. And then we'll then definitely, there's so many things that we're going to discuss today, but yeah, just give us, give us some background. Okay. So I'm glad you're sitting back. Cause this will take a minute. <laughs> so in sixth grade is when it all started, I was diagnosed with osteoporosis and that was kind of like, wow, I'm really young and I don't really hear of any other kids my age getting osteoporosis. And then in seventh grade, my family had moved from my hometown, which is in Michigan, um, to North Carolina. I was just switching schools, trying out new schools, living in a hotel for a month. And it was very stressful. Um, so in that end of my seventh grade year, I was diagnosed with ADHD, OCD, anxiety, insomnia, depression, and narcolepsy. And I wasn't just diagnosed with those. I was very, very much struggling. And this is something that I have to just put the, the um, importance on with my words because I don't have pictures. You can't depict what those things look like, but I lived with it constantly. At one point I was pulling out my own eyelashes. I was self-harming with erasers. I was really, really struggling. So I was put on Adderall, clonazepam and Ambien. I took those for 13 years and I got worse and worse. So near the end of high school, I ran into chronic pain and I went to physical therapy. I saw a chiropractor, nothing helped. I was getting massage. I was getting dry needle therapy. I was trying everything, nothing helped. So I just kind of kept sweeping things under the rug and trying to deal. And I'm living on Adderall and Ambien. So basically taking legal speed during the day mm -hmm. and then knocking myself out at night, although I still didn't sleep well, I would take, um, Benadryl and I would take NyQuil almost nightly with my Ambien to try to sleep. And so, you know, I was functioning, but I was wasting away. Um, I started to lose my hair at one point. I ran into these huge hives, like the size of a grapefruit on the front of my legs. Those happened for like almost a full year, never knew what caused them. And so then I was in real estate after high school. I was engaged. I was in my own place planning our wedding. And I started having these suffocation attacks. I was, I would clench my fist and have my arms so tight to my body. I couldn't peel them away. I would be like in a ball having a suffocation attack. And I was like, I don't know what's happening. So I would go to the emergency room. They would tell me that I had anxiety and they would pump me with morphine and then send me home. <laughs> that was terrifying. And that happened probably at least seven times before I ended up moving out and moving back in with my parents. So that was a really hard season because I, the engagement fell apart. I was sick. I knew something was wrong. So I basically pushed him away. And I write about this in my book. I pushed him away because I wanted to see that he would fight for me. I knew that I was very sick and I was so scared. And I wanted to know that he wasn't going to leave me. And he left because I was I was a bitch, like, excuse my French, but I was just horrible. And, Balance, yeah. and I, I see that now that I'm healed and I'm changed, like how horrible I was to him. But in the moment I was so scared. There was no hate in my heart. I wanted him to stay. And I just think it's so interesting how that can manifest when you're so afraid for your life. So anyways, at that point, 
I realized, okay, these medications are not helping me. I'm going to stop taking them and get to the root of the problem, even if it kills me. Um, so I started seeing functional medicine doctors, and that is when I uncovered over 10 autoimmune diseases. I uncovered chronic Lyme disease. I went to see the Lyme literate doctors. They wanted me on the IVs and taking all the supplements and I couldn't afford it. So I just ran. Um, I decided that's not sustainable. Like I would rather not make it than live my life getting IV injections every day. That might sound horrible. And if it works for some people, I'm happy for you, but it just rubbed me in the wrong way so much. Um, I also noticed that those people were identifying with Lyme disease. And everyone in that clinic was comfortable being there. And it didn't seem like anyone wanted to leave. And that, that rubbed me the wrong way. So I just kind of dumped all that. Um, I had a relative who helped me get ozone therapy in New York city. She had me doing the ketogenic diet, which I had already been doing, but not like tracking macros or anything. Is this your aunt um, that I met? Yes. No, no, no. That's my aunt Judy. Oh, um, who's awesome. This person doesn't even want to be mentioned. She prefers to be private, but she has helped me on multiple occasions. And, um, it's hard because I would love to mention her, but she doesn't want to be. So I'm going to respect that. Um, but yeah, she really helped me like dial into a very strict ketogenic diet. And that's when I started like a four to one fat to protein ratio and it helped. Um, so the Lyme disease had me bed bound at one point, truly bed bound. I couldn't even lift up my own head. The four to one fat to protein ketogenic diet helped me with that. I was able to get out of bed. It stopped the non-epileptic seizures so I could drive again. So that was huge. And at that point I felt like this must be the thing. This must be my breakthrough. And I felt like God was calling me to become a health coach. This was 2017. So I had my business cards made, did all that. And then I started losing rapid amounts of weight, like to the point where I'm eating 6,000 calories and still losing weight. Um, and that was insane. And all of my doctors attributed that to the ketogenic diet. They just said, well, you're doing keto, so you must be trying to lose the weight. And I was like, no, I'm not. I'm eating. No one believed me. I was having diarrhea. Everyone said it was because of keto. No one believed me. So eventually I'm finally tested and diagnosed with C. diff, which is the bad bacteria that takes over the good bacteria in your gut. That is why I got down to 69 pounds at five foot six. In 2019, I'm in my third consecutive emergency room. And they say that they have to remove my colon and hook me up to a feeding tube. And that is when I surrendered. That's when I really felt God saying, you have to drop this need for control because up to this point I was using keto. I felt like it was helping and I was trusting the ketogenic diet more than God himself. Mm -hmm. And that was the biggest moment of surrender in my life because I was practically on my deathbed. You know, it took, I almost dug myself into my own grave. So I dropped keto. I dropped all that noise. I was definitely addicted to the hyper palatable keto treats. I started getting into the ke chemical crappy keto treats. Um, you know, at this point I was, it was just so dark. My family thought I had an eating disorder. No one believed me. And I just wanted to gain weight to save my life. So I had started binge eating. Like it was just a dark place and I just, I just dropped it. And then in that moment, I felt God calling me to the carnivore diet. I felt God saying like, this makes sense. Meat is the most bioavailable form of nutrients, but you're addicted to this stuff. You don't need to track your glucose. You don't need to track your ketones. You just need to eat this food and trust me. And that's what I did. And so I did that in the emergency room. I started eating only, they had shredded pork, hard boiled eggs and butter. That's all I can remember. And I gained four pounds in that emergency room. My blood sugar stabilized, my electrolytes stabilized. And the doctor said, go home and do your weird all meat diet. So that's what I did. I went home and in that season, I was with a, I was in a bad relationship. This guy was a narcissist. Um, and I went home with a backbone again, his abuse, his verbal abuse did not get under my skin. I just knew God was going to make a way. Um, so I stayed there for another like two weeks before I randomly sent out messages on Airbnb asking people, Hey, like I'm healing and I need a place to live because I can't work yet. My family is not talking to me. Can you give me a place to stay? So Tyler, my husband now was the one that responded and he said, Hey, I have a bonus room. You can come stay here. And I'm like, what's the catch? He's like, there is no catch. Look, I have over 700 reviews. So he came on moving day, helped me move into his bonus room. And 
I just, after that, it was just keeping my head down and day after day, eating meat, going to my chiropractor, praying, trusting God. Um, and I gained 65 healthy pounds in one year. I reversed every single diagnosis with labs to confirm. And now I'm here and I'm a full-time health and life coach. Um, I got my certification in 2020. So I was still healing when I got my certification. I hear a lot of people say like, I want to be a health coach, but I'm not healed yet. And I'm like, I was still healing. I just knew that I had found something that worked and I knew it was something that was going to help other people. And that's enough. If you have a heart to help people and you have knowledge, then that's enough. So yeah, that has been my full-time job ever since. Now I'm married and very happy and, um, and we're pregnant. <laughs> I don't know when you're going to publish this. No, but... it'll come, it's, um, I'm a little behind. It'll probably won't come out. For okay, good. Months, so. <laughs> so yeah, um, it's, it's awesome what can be done. And I, I attribute my healing to the carnivore diet, but God first, I say that God is healer and meat is medicine because I never would have gone to carnivore if it weren't for God. And I had to adopt this mindset of, okay, I don't have to do just beef, salt, and water. I ate a lot of billy dough meats, a lot of fatty lamb. I eat the bones, you know, I needed variety and that was a game changer for me. Oh, goodness. Oh, there's so much I want to ask about this. Okay. <laughs> So, um, just, uh, and this will be in the notes and everything, but the title of your book and where oh, yeah. people find it, mm -hmm. it's called my Taylor journey. Mm -hmm. I love it. Tell me about, um, your handle and your, cause people will always try to yeah. tailor, right. Yes. And so yes. How did you come up with your, uh, your branding and everything? Yeah, that was in 2017 when I felt God calling me to be a life coach or a health coach. And I wanted to say tailored keto health because I was obviously keto. I thought I would be keto forever, but the tailored, because at the time I had done a four to one fat to protein ratio. And I realized this is really extreme. Like not everyone needs that. That was my tailored approach. And so I realized everyone needs a different level of fat to protein. Our ratios are going to be changing. And I still, that's still very much of what I do. You know, our needs change from season to season. And I still take a ketogenic approach with everyone that I work with, but it's not strictly keto. It's, it should be, you know, tailored carnivore or something like that. <laughs> um, tailored. Yeah, no, and but, I, I, I love that. We've talked about this so much. Um, you know, Rebecca is expert to me level on explaining scientific processes. I've been to several of her retreats and I've listened to her explain things you can check out her YouTube. So she goes into all these details and what, what I think about with the carnivore world is we're, you know, we're switching back and forth, right? Sometimes we're, we're yeah. out, that's our, it, well, in all of our worlds, whatever. Um, but it's, it, specifically, if you have a zero carb dietary environment, you're going to be flipping back and forth. So it's right. you know, process is always going to be part of our, our healing journey. Cause we're going to right. be there a lot. And we're going to be spending right. a lot of time in, in that, that metabolism that is our natural state. We're born into exactly. ketosis and, you know, that's going to continue to kind of flow, um, back and forth, but, um, okay. So I actually do want to talk about this four to one issue because yeah. like currently right now, uh, in the carnivore space, we seem to think of it as 80, 20 or 90, 10 or 70, 30. Mm. On a four to one, where would that, where would the percents be? Does that make yeah, sense? Good question. So two to one, I believe is 80, 20. Okay. So four to one would be like 95, five. <laughs> like it's really extreme. <laughs> it's I was eating, like it was lower protein for sure for a long time there, because I had to have my ketones at like 5.0 and up. Um, to yes, because I was having real seizures. They were non-epileptic, but they were real seizures. And I was like, I have to be able to drive. Um, so it was, I was like high on ketones all the time. I really felt high. Um, so it was, you had to be extremely intentional with it, but this on the four to one, you still had the C diff. And so you were still dropping, exactly. down, dropping and dropping. Okay. Exactly. Is it to explain the resolution of the C diff component, or is that too complex? No, the resolution. Result? I mean, it, it's more simple than you would think. It was just, I started carnivore and it went away. Like my, my diagnoses dropped off like dead flies. Like it was incredible. So first it was like the symptoms of ulcerative colitis and fibromyalgia, like the involuntary throwing up went away. The blood in my stool stops. Um, there's no, not much pain in my body, still some pain, but not a lot. Um, like I can get out of bed. The chronic fatigue went away. 
So those were the first things I noticed energy, mood. Those were first things I noticed. Um, after six months, I reversed my hypothyroidism and the Hashimoto's was gone. And I tested the C diff around that six month mark and it was gone. And I actually just ran like all my labs again this past, um, spring. Like I think it was in February. Um, and the C diff is still gone. I don't think it's ever come back. I think I would feel it if it did come back because I've experienced that three times. Um, so it was just a matter of healing and sealing my gut. I truly believe that cutting out the anti-nutrients from the baby spinach, the avocado, um, the nuts, the seeds and the keto that I was eating and just eating those nutrient dense animal foods with the fat and the collagen, my gut was healed and sealed and it was strong enough to fight the C diff. Um, I believe that would be the process and I've done it with clients also to heal C diff. It looks a little different from person to person, but it's just a matter of removing the interference and providing the proper foundation. So, and this was without, um, uh, antibiotic treatment. <laughs> so I took 13 rounds of antibiotics for the C diff and it was still there. That's when I was approved for a fecal transplant. I got a fecal transplant and it came back, got another one and it came back. I got three total fecal transplants. And that was what brought me to that emergency room in May, 2019, where they're saying the seed has, has literally seeded in your gut. That's what they said. And you have to remove your colon and be hooked up to a feeding tube because it was just so persistent. Um, fecal transplants are not cheap. They're a big process. And I got three of them and it was still there. So it just blows my mind that so many people are going through these procedures that one are insanely expensive and two, just drag your body down. It's a lot when all you have to do is just heal and seal your gut with real food. Um, that's all I did. So I did take antibiotics. I did do three fecal transplants, but that's not what healed me. That was in conjunction with the four to one keto time. You still yes. had all of those anti-nutrients coming in and just correct up and, you know, causing havoc in the system. Um, so, okay. You said you had 10 autoimmune diagnoses. Could you, can you, uh, can you rattle them off? <laughs> <laughs> all of them? I'm not sure. Okay. So I have, I've done a podcast on the, you cured what, and he's okay. the only person that actually made a list. And I took a screenshot on my phone so I can share that with you, but so I had ulcerative colitis, I had um, diverticulitis, I had true celiac, I had fibromyalgia, I had rheumatoid arthritis, I had peripheral neuropathy, which is not autoimmune, but it's definitely, I consider it in the same class. Um, I had crest scleroderma, which was really severe and almost took my life. Um, and those are the main ones. I'm drawing a blank to the rest. No, it's <laughs> totally fine. No, I'll, we'll get the list. That was just crazy when you said I had 10, whatever. Because yeah, it's actually 10. I also yeah. had like gray nods and I was diagnosed with delayed onset type one. Those are ones I don't talk about a lot because I feel like I was just so insulin resistant at 69 pounds. I don't know if I want to call it delayed onset type one, but I was diagnosed with it. So there are actually some that I was diagnosed with that I don't even talk about because I don't feel that was my experience. I talk about the ones that I really felt and went through. Mm -hmm. Um, so the keto, the switch <laughs> and the switching to carnivore, and you were in the hospital during that period when you made that 100% meat decision, how soon did you figure out about the, the histamine? Was that really early in your no. carnivore journey? It was so, um, I didn't discover Billy Doe, I think for about two months into my carnivore journey and I would get a drippy nose like crazy. Um, I was making bone broth out of chicken feet and pig ears and my nose would just run like a faucet and I knew it was histamine, but I wasn't getting any other symptoms. So I didn't really stop doing the broth, but I was feeling agitated. I started to feel just kind of antsy not even anxious, but just antsy. And I felt like it was bothering me, but I discovered Billy Doe shortly after I started. So they were like, we're unaged. Um, and, and then I just never looked back. So I experienced histamine intolerance before I committed 100% because I had tried carnivore eight times before I actually made it work. I kept doing just beef, salt, and water. Oh. I was in those Facebook forums for these two or three years where I was constantly just like, someone help me. I'm losing okay. weight back and forth. Yes. So I tried, um, everyone's like, you need to do carnivore Rebecca. And I tried the just beef, salt and water. And so I was just doing ground beef and that 
would give me histamine reactions. I felt so horrible every time I was like, I cannot do this. People listen to me. Like it's not for me. And that's why I felt even more. So like keto is my thing because this is making me worse, Mm. but that's, you know, in 2019, I realized it doesn't have to be just beef, salt and water. And so the breakthrough there happened in 2019, but I experienced a histamine intolerance way before that. Mm. So in this space right now, there's a lot of talk about mold toxicity and SIRS. And have you um, had clients with that and helped clients through that journey? And was any of that playing in? I mean, there were so many things playing in. I was just curious what your feedback was about that. I had SIRS. I was diagnosed with SIRS. Um, I did not do the shoemaker protocol and I consider myself healed. Um, I've tested my biomarkers. There are more tests that I could do, but I haven't done them. I just, I feel good. Um, I have worked with clients with SIRS. I have a client now. I'm sure she's comfortable with me sharing. Her name is Helen Um, on Instagram. Her tag is cured.eated and she had to do the shoemaker protocol. So I helped her with her carnivore approach. She gained some healthy weight. She's strong but she needed the shoemaker protocol to finish healing. I've had other clients who had SIRS and they did not need that. And I just took them through what I went through and they're fine. They're completely healed. Usually those people with SIRS also were dealing with mast cell activation syndrome, histamine intolerance. It kind of all looked a little bit similar Mm -hmm. and it was kind of like, okay, unaged me is not doing the trick. You've been consistent. There's something else going on. Mm-hmm. And, but it, it was still just a matter of supporting the body at a systemic level and providing the proper foundation. And that's really the basis of what I offer for, for people with Lyme disease or H pylori or chronic candida infections. Like you don't really need to come in there with much else other than a proper nutritional protocol but I will use herbs on occasion. You know, we have stubborn candida or H pylori or mold can benefit sometimes from oregano or the shoemaker protocol. It just depends on the person. We have to know that everyone is different. Everyone has bio-individual needs, but nutrition is the foundation for everyone. Beautiful. Okay. On the shoemaker, is that something that is, um, that you can kind of broadly describe? I, we can link, you know, notes and with people, I know yeah. there's a lot of resources about it, but can you get into that a little bit? A little bit because yeah. I don't know much about it yet. So, um, the shoemaker protocol was made by Dr. Shoemaker. He basically came up with this protocol to help people detox from mold toxicity. So I know that there are genetic differences in people. Some people absolutely need the shoemaker protocol. Some people don't. I'm the type of person that I don't think I do, but there's a lot of these type of people. And so the protocol involves step-by-step. You're basically going through seasons of different things. Like I know one of them is you increase your DHA fat. You take a ton of fish oil. Mm -hmm. Um, and, And then they have different supplements that they have you do. I think there's a nasal spray that you use. So you go through these different steps in the protocol. Um, I don't know enough about it to really say more. I'm planning on doing the course myself so that I can walk people through it. Yeah. Uh, Rebecca, your knowledge base just um, amazes me. I want to hear actually about your coaching services in that process. And my understanding is that when you take on a client, you're taking them on for a certain period of time. You're not just going to see them once or twice. Uh, So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so when I first started in 2020, I would take anyone (laughs) I needed the money. Um, and I would take, you know, one hour phone calls. And after doing that for a while, I really felt convicted and I felt like I cannot efficiently effectively help someone in one hour. And so I switched my minimum to 90 days because I think that is the amount of time that we need to really teach someone something for someone to get the hang of doing something and to be able to keep going in the same direction. If I'm going to just download information into someone for 60 minutes, it's not enough for someone who's really sick. And that's just my honest opinion. And if, you know, a lot of people offer one hour. And, you know, I'll make exceptions. Like if I have someone who's like, I've been carnivore for two years, I know all these terms, I'm happy to troubleshoot with you for an hour. But if you're a newbie and you don't know what fat adaption is, we need more than an hour. So I have 90 days, six months, and one year. The rate drops with, you know, the longer you commit to. Um, I also offered defer payments for two years when I first started. Up to two years, you could defer your payments. I didn't get paid. (laughs) People just didn't pay me. 
And so I had to stop doing that, which is why I require the money up front. Um, I'm looking into a third party thing that'll allow me to defer payments with guaranteed payment. That's the only issue for me. Uh, and so I basically just take people through bio individual health coaching and life coaching. So we're going to talk about all the things. Usually people have trauma that pairs with their autoimmune disease or their, you know, toxic relationship with food. Um, so we're going to talk about that and work through it and heal from it if you're open to that. And then I offer just bio individual macronutrient recommendations, even down to the foods that you're eating. I'm going to recommend that. What I don't offer is stock meal plans. I don't offer, a, here's a meal that you know, you 2000 people can all eat. I don't work that way. I think everyone has their own picky preferences and a way that needs to be sustainable. Like for me, I needed variety. Mm -hmm. I have, I'm writing a cookbook because I love variety. And there are some people who need simplicity. I really take the time to get to know you and walk you step-by-step. Step. I'm going to hold your hand. I'm also on call. So it's not just one hour per week, but you can also text me. You can call me anytime because I needed that. I remember I needed that. I paid someone in this space. I won't say his name, but it was $900 per hour. And after that call, I had one question and they said, you have to book another call. And I was like, I can't, I literally can't afford this. And so that's why I offer this unlimited coaching, which is you can reach out anytime. You can ping me anytime. I'm going to help you go grocery shopping. I'm going to help you come with a, come up with a recipe, like anything. So yeah, that's what that looks like. That's amazing. And then, um, I, did you, are you guys doing some things actually where you host Were that something that, that folks can come and actually like stay yes. with you and get yeah, to thank you for asking. About that? And have you been doing that? I so have been offering it, but no one's done it yet. Oh. I haven't really talked about it enough, but so we have Airbnb out of our home. So we have really nice bedrooms set up. We have a great setup for us to do that. So I offer in-home coaching. Um, I'm going to just get someone out here. You would have to cover, cover travel expense, but I will cover everything else for the week, including the food. And I'm just going to take you under my wing for, you know, three or four total days and we'll go grocery shopping. We'll eat together. We'll cook together. We're going to sit down and talk about these macros and the trauma and pray together if you're open to that and then, you know, send you on your way. But, um, I have flown to other people to do that, but I haven't had anyone in our home yet to do that. Oh, wow. Well, now that we're just kind of talking about all things, Taylor keto health, all things that you offer, <laughs> let's just cover all of it. So <laughs> how I got to know you the best was on your retreats, your keto retreats. And it's funny because I'll, I'll talk, but I'll, I'll call them a keto retreat. But I'm like, I'm a hundred percent carnivore. These are carnivore retreats. You know, there was <laughs> yeah. no lacking of meat. There was an abundance of meat. I actually, you know, probably overdo it a little bit on the first one. I really <laughs> did it. It was so amazing. And so by the time I got to the second one, I'm like, okay, in order for me to actually enjoy these meals, like I have to, I had to cut it down and make it smaller. Cause it was just so incredible. And there was a lot of people say that, <laughs> Oh my goodness. And there's always leftovers in the fridge and, you know, so as a meat lover, meat eater, that was like my, it wasn't my favorite thing about your treats, but it was, it was <laughs> crucial that there was yeah no concern. We're not used to that as carnivores. Like if we go out to eat or if we're at somebody right. else's house, we're used to like, I'm just going to be a small amount. I'm just going to have to live with it. Right. How did this happen? How did this um, dream start coming true? And uh, how many have you done? And is it going to keep continue on the retreat? Yes. So I've done, let's see, I think it's five now, or it will be five this fall. Yeah. I did 21. I did fall 21, spring, fall. Yeah. So I'll be five this fall. And honestly, what started it was the relative who I can't mention. She used to host retreats and I would be her helper. And I was like, this is amazing. Like, I want to do this someday. So actually that's what planted the seed. But then, you know, when I discovered Billy Doe Meats and I started making these recipes, I would get so many people asking me to help them with the recipe. And I just decided I want to do this in person because people you know, people feel like it's too complicated to make a big piece of meat. Like, like it's intimidating to cook a lamb shoulder or a goat leg because it's large, but it's so simple. You just put it in the oven with some herbs and garlic, you know, if you want. And it's amazing. So I just wanted to show people like, this is totally sustainable, totally easy. I wanted to introduce these other, you know, Billy Doe Meats, these amazing companies that made it sustainable for me. Um, I have a lot of clients with histamine intolerance and a lot of people that come to my retreats say, 
for the first time ever, I'm not having histamine issues mm. or the first time ever. I'm not craving my next meal because they're eating so much fat. Like I'm very intentional with the first night. I always do boneless lamb sirloin. The next morning I always do lamb chops. I'm getting that fat into people so they can skip lunch. They can intermittent fast. They can just enjoy their life and they end up, you know, at the end of the week, they're ready to go home and do it. And so that's what it's all about is just making a positive imprint on someone and allowing that fellowship to occur. The fellowship is the most invaluable part. Um, you know, you can do anything at home and you, we have Instagram and social media and zoom, which is great. But when you're in person with someone, like I feel your energy, like I feel, I get to feel your warmth, you know, and it's life-changing. Then you can go home and it becomes real to you. And when you have doubts and you're by yourself or your family's not eating the same way, you can think about your tribe at the retreat. You can think about all those other people who are in this for the same reason, you know, for better health, for better mood, you know, whatever it may be, you're not alone. And it's just so encouraging, even for me. Um, you know, sometimes I'm like in the background, just cooking and being crazy, but I'm so blessed just to see all these relationships forming around me and these friendships. Um, and I see breakthroughs, you know, people come to me with their breakthroughs and it's just, it just, it makes my whole year. It's incredible. It does. I feel like it's a, it's an investment and it's a saturation. You're saturated mm -hmm. with true knowledge, true science. I mean, gosh, I think most, most of that I've been to, you've had Dr. Barry and Nisha. Yeah. Okay. We can learn it. There, there's nothing we can't yeah. learn with those minds there. We've had your yes. mind there teaching. And so you get like, I feel like you get every part of your being filled up. Like it's definitely like body, mind, spirit, whatever. And the food is so good. There's no weird tempting food there at all. You don't have any kind of like a, oh, wow. I wish I could have that. Or, you know, right. like we're just so nourished. So the fact that you have uh, put these together and did you have dreams and plans of doing this before Tyler was in your life, by the way, I'm just curious. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Definitely. So it just kind of worked out that he came to my first one. Um, it was actually right after his father had passed away and I didn't think he was going to go, but he was like, I, I know you could use my help. So he came along and, um, it was that week that he was like, I, I want you to be my girlfriend. <laughs> so that was a very special first retreat. Um, so he has such a big heart. You'll see him there cooking the meat, moving all the stuff out of the van. He does so much this upcoming one. I'm going to hire someone because we're going to have a big crowd. So I'll have to hire extra help, but he'll still be there helping for sure. Okay. Yeah. I have, I have been so impressed by him. And was it at the same spot that we did this last fall where you did yes. your first one that he came to, was it actually the same unit? Yes. Yeah, same cabin. Oh, no, no, no. The first one was um, the same cabin company, but a different cabin. Gotcha. It was only like, um, I think we only had like 12 people total. So I only had like eight bedrooms. Did you um, have a guest now, speaker at that one? No, I had Sally Norton, but she was on Zoom. Oh, yeah. she was on Zoom. Yeah, she couldn't make it for some reason, but it was still really good. And that was when Tyler finally was convinced to go carnivore because Sally's like, yeah, high oxalate foods are potatoes, peanut butter, like all these foods that Tyler eats every day. And he was just like shrinking in the corner and it changed him. Um, that was really exciting. <laughs> Amazing. Well, he, so he always explains that he was a cook for the Navy. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He just took for like over 400 people, I think more every day. So he is quite the cook. He's a tornado. He's just like, shoo, shoo, <laughs> like going all these places. And like, he moves so fast and, the yeah. and, but it's such a great example too, because we all get to be there. You use a lot of Instapot, but then yeah. you like finish it in the air fryer. And so there's yep. Instapots everywhere. There's air fryers everywhere. Are you going to have to um, invest more in your equipment for the upcoming yeah. fall retreat? Yeah, we'll have to double it, but that's okay. You know, so right now I think I have four Instapots and four extra air fryers and oh. that we usually have leftovers, you know? So I'm like, how much extra do I really need? But every retreat, I always get extra because I never want someone going hungry. I want there to always be so much food. I want to send people home with leftovers. So it's worth the extra expense. It has to be that way. It just has to. Wow. Tell us about, uh, the next retreat. So the next retreat is going to be, I think it's going to be the best ever. We have a dream team. So we have 
oh my goodness, we have Lisa Wienemans coming again because she really enjoyed my last retreat, which was so special. Um, we have Dr. Barry, Misha Barry, we have Kelly Hogan, and we have Maria Emmerich. So I can't even think of like a better dream team. I mean, it'd be awesome to have Anthony Chafee, but <laughs> I don't know if he can make it. <laughs> he said he would love to come to one. Did you, did you ask him about this one? I have not asked him about this one yet. Do but you I want could. me to ask for you? No. <laughs> yeah. He <laughs> loves to go. He loves to do this sort of thing. He I really does. And he does, but I know he's coming for August. There's um, a low carb in uh, San Diego that he's been asked okay. to present at. So it's kind of like, you know, he comes to stuff, but it's kind of like if we can catch yeah. him he's up in, in the States visiting his family already, or when there's other speaking engagements. Yeah. Kind of come along. So yeah, we need to get this all planned out so that it's like, your retreat is somehow in proximity to one of the big keto low carb conferences. Right. You just like grab everybody from the conference and help yeah. out the retreat. <laughs> I've heard there was another retreat actually happening the same days of ours. There and that- there so uh, uh, Natalie Glass, Glass uh, Natalie, I'm just gonna say Natalie, sorry. Coach Bronson is doing oh, something. Wow. And he actually, the, I believe Barry's going to be part of that. And I know oh. that he has Courtney Luna doing his food. That's so awesome. I don't know if you've met her yet. She's amazing. Not in person. Oh, she, well, she's new on the scene and on Instagram and she's has such wonderful um, carnival yes. recipes and such. So she's going to do his food. And I know she wow. was like, I come and visit you guys. I'm like, well, I'll check with Rebecca, but I don't see oh my why. Gosh. Like, that, that'd be awesome. That good. would be so cool. We'll just all get together. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, so that's, she's going to be in the area to be doing that. And of course, Bronson is very focused on fitness and exercise and it's so yeah. great. His approach, I'm sure you know him, but his yeah. approach is all about the exercise is for you enjoying your life and having the highest function in your life. And that nutrition is also for that. And so yeah. he just like puts that both in those directions. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's like same heart, same mission. We're all just heading in that, um, that direction. So, ah, okay. And what are the dates of your fall retreat? October 11 through 16. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. Yeah. yeah. When I saw everybody that was, I mean, I have to go to them anyways. So I just have to, and this last <laughs> spring one, there was this, I had just done, um, keto con was what had happened. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, okay, I can't do back to back, you know, right. but it is such a blessing that you're offering these in the community. We need this and they mm-hmm. help just solidify everything. And um, uh, us retreat growers have a different kind of gang. Like when we see each other, we saw each other at KetoCon. Um, Jen was there and uh, Bruce and Buzz were there. Yeah. Yeah. And so just to have like, oh, like they're just like you, you actually have created a whole nother carnivore family. So <laughs> I'm so glad. Yeah. I'm so excited. It's really, it's just such a pleasure to be able to do it. And you know, we haven't made money. Like we have not made money on these. And sometimes people will be like, why is it so expensive? And I'm like, like, we literally spend more than what we're asking. We've run all the numbers like per person. It costs more than what we're asking, but thank God it's not about the money. Like as long as we're able to do it, we're going to do it because this is like, money is just so little compared to what you get when you walk away from like changing someone's life and making friendships and these connections. Like, that's why I'm talking with you right now. Cause I met you at my retreat, you know, like <laughs> it's, it's invaluable. Yes, I agree completely. Um, I love what you're talking about too, about how you design the retreat in a certain way. And I had heard that you had started incorporating, um, a little bit more beef maybe at the last one. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And did that go okay? Did, I remember at our, yeah. the first one that I went to, there was only one time that uh, those that uh, we had struggles, like uh, that we weren't feeling our best. And it was kind yeah. of like overall, and it was the night I can't remember if we had brisket or what it, it was. was. Brisket. Yes. Okay. It was that brisket, a bunch. I mean, a couple of people didn't feel good. I don't know if it, because it had too much rendered fat or if it was the histamine, but, um, we just got some, you know, from our local market that we get Tyler's beef from, we got some ribeyes, we were making jerky the whole time. So that was really good. Yeah. We'll do that again. Um, perfect. Yes. And what else did we have? We had short ribs, beef, short ribs. So it was just a little bit of beef, just kind of break things up. Um, and we'll do that again. 
Yeah. I love the mindset behind it though. I love why you chose to start it out in that certain way. I'm um, getting those, that fats and uh, that I, I really noticed. So by the time the second retreat I went to this high fat thing was trending, trending, trending in the space. And, you know, so much of us just flourish on that. Anyhow, I kind of always have, um, but it was, it was hilarious to see with every meal, there was so much butter and we were using that butter. I was like, <laughs> yep. Oh, got to get more yeah. butter. I think I was replacing the butter the most at that one. For sure. It was like two sticks, no, three sticks every meal replaced. And I was so happy. Like, I really felt proud of you guys. I was like, they get it. <laughs> this is so good. I wanted to get into fats because you're such a science head. I feel like I can ask you anything. Um, <laughs> so I, I want to, I, I've heard you teach about um, stearic acid fats and the different yeah. fat profile. Um, so I want to talk about animal fats. And then I do have another question about how is it different metabolically than burning like your own fat? And when your own mm-hmm. fat releases as you're, you know, going through the process of the fat loss process. So let's just kind yeah. of talk things fat. Yeah. Okay. So there are some fats that are better than others. Obviously vegetable oil and stuff is not even considered fat. So I'm not even going to talk about that. It's just, I poison. love it. We're not even calling it fat. It's, it? it's not an option, but in the carnivore world, we have polyunsaturated fat and saturated fat. So pork and chicken are primarily composed of polyunsaturated fat. And for anyone who's curious, you can literally just Google the animal plus lipid profile. The lipid profile is the fat profile. If you want to learn about the protein, you Google that animal plus amino acid profile. Okay. So pork and chicken have a lot of polyunsaturated fat and polyunsaturated fat is not bad but we know that it's an omega-6. We know that it can be inflammatory in high amounts. If your omega-3 and 6s are not balanced, then we can run into inflammation. So if you're someone who's only eating chicken and pork every day and you have chronic pain, I am 99.9% sure you'll feel better if you just start eating more saturated fat and lower your polyunsaturated fat. It can be inflammatory. Um, Polyunsaturated fat also is not as readily used for fuel as saturated fat. So, you know, people talk about MCTs and how it's just quick fuel. Saturated fat is also quick fuel. Like you don't need MCTs, just eat saturated animal fat coming from ruminant animals, lamb, especially lamb fat has the second highest amount of stearic acid. The first highest source of stearic acid is cacao butter, which is not even an animal fat. So you don't get your vitamins A, E, D, E, and K. So I think lamb fat is the best. I think that's where it's at. It has a lot of conjugated linoleic acid, which helps us to burn more fat. And then we have beef, we have bison, we have goat, all those other things. So polyunsaturated fat is actually recycled into your lymphatic system and then deposited into your fat cells for storage. That is the nature of polyunsaturated fat. So you will eventually burn it if you're fat adapted and you're burning your own body fat for fuel, but saturated fat just goes into your bloodstream and and is oxidized for fuel. So you kind of skip that process of storage. Um, and it's just, it's quicker to be oxidized. So in terms of burning your own body fat versus dietary fat, that's just talking about, um, I would say oxidative priority. So if you eat sugar, your body will burn sugar first. If you drink alcohol, your body will burn that first. So alcohol, sugar, dietary fat, then your own body fat, your, but your own body fat is at the bottom. So once you've used and oxidized the dietary fat that you had that day, or the fat that you put into your mouth, the exogenous fat, then you will start to burn fat endogenously your own body fat, which is nutritional ketosis. So if you want to burn your own body fat, you do need to account for energy in energy out. Mm -hmm. Um, that's just part of the equation. We're not going to talk about calories, but we're going to talk about energy Mm -hmm. because what we eat is energy and what we burn is also energy. I love it. Oh, that is so helpful. Oh, where does butter lay in all this? Butter is awesome. So butter is, there's a really good, I mean, there are a lot of charts, but there's one that I just saw talking about the linoleic acid and different fats. Butter is like way up here where like, it has like nothing. Coconut oil even has more linoleic acid than butter. So butter is full of conjugated linoleic acid. It has butyrate, which is great for your gut. And it's just a great fuel for sure. Awesome. And when you're talking about the, the poly, does it have any of the polyunsaturated in butter? Is it all saturated? I don't think so. Okay. I believe it's, um, it has some monosaturated, but it's mostly saturated. 
Wow. I love the link that you just um, put there, but because everybody understands about the MCT that right. it somehow goes straight to your brain or something, right? It just like turns into that, but you're basically saying that a saturated, like a lamb fat, a saturated animal fat is basically the same thing. Yeah, it is basically the same thing. And I actually think that cutting out MCTs and just eating animal fat will make you so much more fat adapted because I used to rely on MCTs in my keto days. And one of the biggest transitions for me was cutting out coconut oil and MCTs and eating only tallow. Mm -hmm. Like I was so worried my ketones would plummet, but they didn't. And I think that MCT can become sort of like a crutch. You need to allow your body to see animal fat and decide I'm going to burn this for fuel because MCTs is just forcing it. You know, there's no choice. They have to be burnt. They're not bad, but I think they can become a crutch. Wow. I love that. It makes me think of, um, <clears throat> any supplement that you're using when you don't need to, or whatever that it just shuts down the pathway for your own body exactly. to open up its own pathway. So yeah, these are, these are crucial components that you're explaining. And I love how you're explaining it. So, uh, we're talking about fat loss. You talked about oxidative priority. We talked about the teaching your body to burn fat. Um, what are some other ways that you encourage clients and listeners to, um, get the fat loss that they're looking after? So step one is becoming fat adapted. And a lot of people don't want to hear it, but you might have to gain weight before you can lose it. Um, like I started at 69 pounds, but I got all the way up to 155. Mm -hmm. And my chiropractor was like, you can stop gaining weight. <laughs> I was like, thanks. But that's what it took for my body to feel safe. And I didn't even change anything. I just kept listening to my hunger and then it leveled out at 125. I did nothing to my knowledge. I just listened to my hunger. So if you're someone who has been, you know, doing rigorous diets or roller coasters and even starvation diets and low calorie for years and years and years, and you, and you're running on coffee and your adrenals are shot, you might have to gain some weight in order for your body to feel safe, to, to lose it. Your body is starving. Your body is stuck in this starvation mode. And it drives me crazy when I see these influencers, just random influencers on Instagram, talking about, you know, your body going in, into starvation is just a, is a myth. It's not a myth. Your body will adapt to whatever you're giving it. And so if you're constantly giving it 800 calories, it will downregulate and adapt to that. Your yeah. body will downregulate. And so you have to give it time to upregulate. And so I really do a lot of reverse dieting with my clients. I don't really even use the terminology, but that's what I do is look, we're going to give it the proper foundation to thrive. And you might gain some weight, but you're going to be raising your metabolic rate. And then it's going to be effortless to lose fat. You will be leptin sensitive. You can trust leptin to, to just regulate your weight. That's what happened with me. Um, and it happens with anyone. You can trust fat, animal fat and protein. If you cut out carbs, it's just plain and simple. Some people have insulin resistance. That'll take them longer to lose that weight or to be leptin sensitive or to drop the cravings, but it doesn't mean you're doing the wrong thing. It just takes longer. And so when you're talking about fat adaptation, leptin sensitivity and insulin becoming corrected, these are, I feel like it's like all like these pieces that work together synergistically, correct? Yeah, definitely. For oh. sure. They're just hormones. You know, I, when I look at my clients, I literally just see hormones. Everything is about hormones. If you want to lose weight, you're going to have to fix your hormones, including your thyroid hormones, your cortisol, your insulin sensitivity, your circadian rhythm, because that is, it's, you know, regulated with your hormones. Like it's really very much about hormones. It's also about behavioral health. You know, a lot of us lean to food when we're emotional or stressed out or whatever. And that is something to work through in itself. And I definitely do that with people because I had to do it for myself, mm -hmm. but most of it is hormonal. Mm -hmm. Once the hormones fi get fixed, the other things kind of come in into line underneath that. Exactly. A lot of binge eating, I think comes from people who are not leptin sensitive. When you're leptin sensitive, it's just like that. I'm just done eating. Yep. And when I struggled with binging, like I would eat from 10 PM to 5 AM literally like not stopping and I wouldn't even feel full. And so I know that's hormonal, um, largely a lot of it is stress and emotional and stuff like that. And it has to be addressed, but your hormones do also. When do you incorporate movement and workouts with your clients? Do you try to get them going on that right away? Or does that kind of come later? It's always up to the person. So 
they, people will usually, you know, be forward or ask me, should I start going to the gym? And I'll just say, you know, I want you to go when you feel like it. I want you to go when you have the energy to first, Mm -hmm. I want you to focus on like just taking good care of yourself and not dragging yourself through the day. When it feels natural, I want you to go to the gym and I want you to start doing uh, resistance training. I could care less about cardio. Cardio is great for your mind. It's great to go for walks and be out in nature. But in terms of like your hormones, I want you to lift heavy things and heavy things is relative to where you're at. So that could start with body weight. That's what I did. Um, you know, a five pound dumbbell, maybe the heavy, it may be heavier for someone versus someone lifting a 45 pound dumbbell because that's the heaviest thing they've lifted in years, you know? So it's all relative to where you're at. And you're just asking, you are giving your muscles a stimulus to grow and creating insulin sensitivity. And that was one of the major keys to my weight gain. I never ate at a massive surplus. I was lifting and I was eating what I needed and that's enough to grow in a healthy way. So when people are comfortable, I will definitely recommend it. Love it. Oh my goodness. I just looked at the time. Like we've been talking for an hour. I can't even believe that. I'm just like sitting like 15 minutes. Oh my goodness. Okay. I mean, I'm going to bring one more health question in. I feel like, you know, we could, we'll just see, we'll see if we get more opportunities to talk about things because you explain things in such an effective holistic manner. It just really blows my mind. I'm curious huh. if fasting has been part of your journey and if you do it at all right now, if that's been part of part of your story. Say again, if what fasting, if that's been part of your journey, you practice that at all or, you know, yeah. So when I was really sick and I was really sick for a long time, um, this was like right after I had moved back in with my parents and I broke up with the guy I was engaged to, I started doing extended fasting because I was having such gut issues and I knew fasting was healing. So I would do like five day fasts. But then I started to lose all that weight and I had to stop. I was like, this is obviously not a good idea. And so when I started healing, I started fasting again after like a year of consistent, just eating meat, keeping my head down. Now, never once have I not intermittent fasted. I've always done 16, eight, even when I was 69 pounds, I don't care how much weight you have to gain. I want you to let your insulin get low because that's when recovery happens. Everyone needs that. So I always did 16, eight, no problem. Um, but then after a year I did some rolling 72 or 48 hour fasts, I actually gained muscle and I lost fat and it was really cool. Um, but then when I joined CrossFit, I stopped extended fasting because I don't want to do CrossFit and fast. It's just too extreme for me. And, and I recently set out to do a five day fast because I had spoken with my parents and my dad was like, yeah, your mom did a 21 day and I did a 10 day. I was like, what? Mm-hmm. Like, if you can do that, then I can at least do five days. So I set out to do it, but my body just kept telling me I couldn't like, and I was ashamed, but then I found out I was pregnant. So I think that's what was going on. I think that's what was going on. So I do 16, a, um, I very often still eat one meal a day. I get my calories in, but I'm just about listening to my body right now. And I, I'm going to gain weight. You know, I have to gain weight if I'm pregnant. So fasting is fantastic. Intermittent fasting is good for everyone. Extended fasting is good in its place. And I needed to, heal my binge eating, heal my relationship with food before I allowed myself to do that, because I'm the type of person who would see it as an opportunity to binge prior to the fast. And so I really had to be careful about that for a long time. Wow. Um, what, uh, tips do you have about people on the, with their body image? Cause I know that you seem so healed in that perspective and now you're going to be growing and shrinking and growing and shrinking, you know, all this is happening? What have been one of the major components when you're working with people with that, with those issues? So, uh, man, I've had bad body, body dysmorphia. Like I've gained weight and lost it so many times in my life. And for a season, when I was healing, I actually covered the lower portion of my full length mirror with uh, cardboard paper or paper. Cause I didn't want to see my legs grow. Like, even though I was so 69 pounds, I really, have always been self-conscious about my thighs and it just, I didn't want to see it. And, but what was so wonderful is that gaining weight on carnivore versus gaining weight with carbs. Cause I've done both carnivore is so comfortable. I gained 65 pounds, which is a lot to gain in one year. And I never once felt like I had to tear out of my own skin, which is a sensation that I used to struggle with a lot. I never felt like there was like 
jiggly fat, you know, tingling on my legs. And if you're a woman, you probably will know what I'm talking about. You don't feel that way because your blood sugar is not going like this. You're not really storing much fat. You're building muscle. You're healthy. Your hormones are upregulated. You're going to have energy. Your even your sex drive will improve. And it's like, this feels right. So yeah, I have a lot more fat on my body, but it feels right. And so now I know, I just know that it is healthy. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, yeah, I see myself now versus last spring when I had a six pack and I'm like, man, that was kind of nice. I kind of wish I was there, but I'm not upset because I have energy. I'm really strong, way stronger than I was last spring Mm -hmm. and I'm pregnant and, and that's really all that matters in life to me. Like, and plus I'm already married. So who cares? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I love it. Yeah. My weight fluctuates quite a bit on carnivore and I've been super, super lean and not as lean. And, um, but the, the times that I'm not as lean though, I like how it sits. It just, it sits. Yes. Well. It goes in good places. Big deal. Yeah. Yeah. It's not Honestly, my butt is bigger and like, it still looks good. Like, and you feel good. I think that's what I try to tell people is like, I want you to focus on the feeling and not the image. Because the image is false. And if you go and look at these influencers on Instagram and you watch their, what I eat in a day, like many of these people are under eating, man. I just watched one yesterday and she had like coffee, a bowl of fruit and one of those frozen dinners. And it had like six ounces of chicken. That was her whole day. And, and she's obviously like, looks really healthy and she's ripped, but she's not healthy. And I actually work with a lot of these people who are influencers and guess what? They are hangry. Their hormones are jacked up. They have acne that they have to cover up all the time. So I want you to focus on how you feel and being true to yourself. Amazing. Rebecca, I love you so much. You I love you too. Joy. Thank you. I mean, you just, I just love the truth that comes out of you. You're a powerhouse. You're being used by God so tremendously. And I love that you're just open to that and open to sharing that with other people. It means the world to me. Um, anything you want to share with folks about, you know, where to find you, what you're doing, new developments. I mean, you told us the biggest one. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, thankfully you asked it. Thank you for giving me that the opportunity to share. And thank you for just being who you are. You are such a bright light. You are an inspiration to me. Anytime I'm having like a sour attitude or a bad day, I think of you and I'm like, Emily has such a good attitude all the time. (laughs) I want to be like her. And that's so powerful. So thank you for that. And um, yeah, I think you covered it. My Instagram is Taylor Keto Health. I post a lot on Instagram. I have a YouTube channel, Taylor Keto Health. My website is taylorketo.health. Oh, we didn't um, talk about your cookbook. Tell them about your, your Oh cookbook. yeah. I have a yeah, cookbook yeah. coming out, still writing it. And it's just oh. going to have all these recipes that made it more sustainable for me. So lots of carnivore brownies, carnivore ice cream. And it really is um, geared towards these people who are very sensitive with autoimmune issues. They're healing, but they need variety. I'm basing it off of that. So it is, it's very much carnivore. It just has variety and garnish. That's very mindful, like low oxalate, low carb. So Um, There will be some keto options, but it's really mostly carnivore. Incredible. Oh, awesome. Well, this has been amazing. I thank you just as I am for spending time with me. So beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm